Thanks, Ted. It has been just over a week now that uh, 13,000 residents here in High River have been on the outside looking in, waiting and wondering when they're going to be allowed back home. I'm joined now by actually one of those residents, perhaps uh, uh, most famous resident uh, here in High River, Danielle Smith, leader of the Wild Rose. And uh, Danielle, I guess, uh, obviously a lot, a lot of questions, a lot of tension building up here. I know you've been holding uh, town halls, talking to residents. Just uh, give me a sense as to what you're hearing and, and what the feeling is coming out of the community right now. I think everybody is still very positive, very optimistic, but they're losing patience. I, I, for the last few days, have been indicating what it is people need. They, the businesses need to know. They can go back into the community, assess their business, get their payroll so that they can actually cut checks, identify which employees are going to have to lay off. They haven't done that yet. Residents need to know what color dot is on their door. They're doing dots of green, yellow, orange, and red so that they know the status of their home. They're not giving that information out. I've asked for a firm reentry plan so that everybody knows when they're going to be able to return home. They're finally going to announce that today at 1230. And I hope that manages to bring down some of the tension. But this is very unusual for residents of High River. They have had flooding in this community for for decades. You can talk to people who remember the flood of 36, and they've never, ever been locked out of their home, certainly not for eight days. So you can imagine why they're wondering, what's so different this time? We've done this before. Why can't we even get in to assess the damage? And I think that the government is responding finally to those pressures, but it has been disappointing to see that uh, there, there, hasn't, there hasn't been much done yet in the way of accommodating some of the concerns of residents. And sadly, the inf information flow just hasn't been there. That's why I'm doing town halls, is I'm trying to bridge the information gap, taking what it is the mayor and other official sources say during the day, doing a town hall from 8.30 to 9.30 at night, trying to get people's questions, answering them on the website we've set up, highriverflood.info, and we're going to keep on doing that until the information flow gets better. You talk about the government uh, in your estimation finally taking steps to, to remedy the situation. Uh, obviously, 12.30 today, we find out more about this stage uh, reentry plan. What do you want to see come from that, and how do you how do you see this moving forward to, to getting people back into their homes? Well, I, I, what I hope is in the plan is a pretty clear indication of which zones were the best and which zones were the worst. Uh, clear dates on when each zone is going to be allowed in to assess their home. Some clear understanding of what they're going to be in for, whether it's going to be to just take care of, of their belongings or whether they're going to start rebuilding and people need to know the status of their home. you got people not knowing whether they're going to be able to move back or whether they're going to have to completely rebuild because their home has to be demolished. That's not fair to people. They need to know. All right, and we do have to get going here, but I want to ask you real quickly, because uh, we're celebrating heroes and volunteers today, just uh, in your estimation, who's who's the, the biggest hero out of all of this? Well, the biggest hero to me is the crew of guys who got in a manure spreader and came and rescued me when I was when I was in the hospital under, w with four feet of water rolling past. I've met one of them since. His name is Jason. He actually broke his ankle that night, and he's been over at one of the uh, evacuation centers. So every time I see him, I, I give him a big hug and tell him he's my hero. There you go. And those are the types of stories that are helping uh, people get through what uh, obviously has been a, a devastating week here. So thank you very much for coming out, uh, Danielle. That's Danielle Smith, leader of the Wild Rose Party and High River resident. Uh, back to you, Tim.